Hello and welcome to the UWS Sports Show. Today's show is jam-packed with news, features and highlights from the world of sport. My name is Nicky Smith. And I'm Lethal Amy. We have a roundup of all last night's football, including the Manchester Derby and highlights from St Johnson's away win at St Mirren. St Andrews Golf Club are expected to announce today a vote on whether to accept women as members of the club for the first time. And we have a live studio interview with Scottish badminton star Kirsty Gilmore. It was a big night in the world of football last night. Manchester United's troubles continued under David Moyes as he lost 3 0 to local rivals Manchester City, who now stand only nine wins from the Premier League Championship. However, Arsenal's title hopes have all but disappeared for another season as they could only draw two each at home to Swansea. Celtic could clinch their third consecutive Scottish Premiership title tonight after Aberdeen could only manage a 1-0 draw away to Ross County last night. Celtic took on Partick Thistle at Fir Hill this evening. St Johnston continued their good form of run with a 1-0 victory over St Mirren and Paisley last night. Stephen McLean scored the only goal of the game to pile more misery on the Buddies and manager Danny Lennon. David Graham reports. St Mirren's poor run of form continued at home to St Johnson last night. The home side started brightly, with John McGinn forcing an early save from St Johnson keeper Alan Manis after five minutes. The visitors also had an early chance, with David Witherspoon dragging this effort wide of the post. The Buddies' best chance of the game came late on in the first half. This scrambled from a corner, so efforts blocked by the Perth defence, while Josh McGinnis and Sean Kelly claimed for a penalty. The only goal came after 41 minutes. Stephen McLean sneaking round unmarked to the back post to volley home for Tommy Wright's men. Poor St Mirren defending, leaving McLean with a simple finish. St Mirren pushed to find an equaliser, however, this shot by John McGinn summed up their evening and season so far. Full time score, St Mirren now, St John So, Danny, obviously you lost 1 0 tonight. What's your reaction to the game? Yeah, we're bitterly disappointed. Um, with the, with the scoreline and the overall performance, I thought the the first ten minutes of the first half and the, the first ten minutes of the, the opening in the second half were our best periods uh, within the game, and for long periods um, we made the wrong wrong decisions tonight. One 0 tonight, good victory. Yeah, great victory. I think it's a difficult place to come somewhere in. You know they're fighting for their lives. You know we we knew that we played against Ross County last week and got beat. You know so we knew we had to be up for the fight first and foremost. You know and put all the effort in. Uh, the commitment, the desire to win a game of football and thought we did that. Andy Murray is through to the quarter-finals of the Miami Open. Murray saw off Joe Wilfred Songa 6-4, 6-1, despite needing treatment on his back during play. He will now face Novak Djokovic after the Serb beat Tommy Robredo in straight sets. It will be the first time the pair have faced each other since the Wimbledon final last July. The Grand National takes place a week on Saturday and a horse close to many hearts will line up for the first time. Long Run is bidding to become the first Gold Cup winner since General Miller to win the Aintree showpiece and will have plenty of support on his side. He's a 16 to 1 chance with many bookmakers. His top class ability is expected to see him go close in the nation's favourite race. He's in Scotland as his big race preparations begin and our correspondent Andrew Miller reports. History was made as Long Run, the 2011 Cheltenham Gold Cup winner, began his Grand National preparations at Kelso. It was the first time a Gold Cup winner had raced in Scotland and he was the star attraction of the Ivan Straker Memorial Chase. Sent off as a hot favourite by the bookies, he outclassed his three opponents on the way to a comfortable victory. The final bits. Look. Go on, Joe! It was an impressive performance and jockey Sam Wheelie Cohen was full of praise for his mount. Yeah, he's achieved so much in himself and, and for me and for, uh, for all the family. He's really uh, taught us a lot about life, given us some great days and, and in many ways he's part of the family. So uh, it's just great when he comes out and runs like that and shows you know, the class he has. Andrew Miller reporting from Kelso Racecourse. Great pictures there. Uh, we are joined in the studio by Andrew Miller himself. Andrew. Do you believe Long Run has the ability to win such a difficult race? Well, he's got to have a great chance, hasn't he? His jumping was impressive at Kelso. Um, that's been a sticky point for him in the past, and I expect him to see out the, the trip. What are the different challenges horses face in the Grand National? 
The biggest one would be the fences. Um, there are a lot larger obstacles than, than most of these horses we've seen before. Um, and you need a horse who, who will jump well. Um, another problem would probably be the, the trip of four and a half miles. Uh, I think it's, it's probably about a mile longer than a lot of these horses will have travelled in the past. And uh, it's a gruelling finish over the last few furlongs. Do you believe the race still holds the same appeal for those involved in the sport? Definitely. Um, there was a lot more entries this year uh, than in previous years. I think there's still 73 horses left in the, in the entries at the minute, which will be cut down to 40 on the day. And as always, the, the punters will be there uh, picking their favourites uh, on the day themselves. Thanks for joining us today, Andrew. No problem. It looks like women are going to be welcome to the world's most exclusive golf club after the Royal and Ancient urged an end to its men-only status. The hugely powerful RNA, which also serves as a sports governing body, has written to all 2,500 of its current members, recommending that they agree to allow women in to join the club for the first time. News of the outcome is expected today, and we'll bring it to you when it happens. Now, Formula One. Red Bull owner Dietrich Mateschitz has warned that his company could quit Formula One if he's not happy with the way the sport is run. His remarks follow the controversial Australian Grand Prix where Red Bull driver Daniel Ricciardo was excluded from the race after breaching new fuel consumption rules. Red Bull's appeal against Ricciardo's exclusion from the season opening race will be held on April 14th. And now something special, or someone special, Scotland's very own badminton ace, Kirsty Gilmore, has taken time out of her busy schedule to talk to us live in studio today. Kirsty is a lock for the Scottish Commonwealth team and is also a medal hopeful as she is ranked 18th in the world and has just come off a winning Swedish Masters title. So Kirsty, thank you very much for joining us today. How does winning the Swedish Masters affect your build-up for the Commonwealth Games? The Swedish, winning the Swedish was just a real confidence boost for me. Um, the kind of top players in Europe were there, or well, um, a few of them weren't there, but a lot of them were. And uh, I really had to put in a good three or four consistently solid performances uh, to take that title. Okay, so what's your schedule like uh, on the run up to the Commonwealth Games? Pretty busy, <laughs> um, to be honest. Um, so I have maybe a, a week in uh, Spain training mm -hmm. before the Europeans, which is in Kazan in Russia. Um, and then it's the club championships, the European club championships, and then uh, maybe a three-week kind of tour of Asia and Australia um, before the actual Commonwealth Games. And then three weeks after the Commonwealth Games, it's the world champs, so <laughs> no stopping. That's definitely a busy summer. Uh, so what is the sorry, what are the events you're going to be competing in in, in the Games? Um, well, I've quite comfortably uh, qualified for the singles, um, which in turn qualifies me for the doubles as well. Okay, okay, and your uh, doubles partner Imogen Banneker, um, she'll be your partner in the Commonwealth Games as well there, yeah? Yeah, she'll be. Um, we started playing just kind of at the end of December, mm -hmm. um, so we have to play out 10 tournaments to get a, a true ranking, and then hopefully if we do well enough in those 10, we'll get a good seeding position so we can avoid some of the, the higher ranked uh, pairs um, until the, the later rounds. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, now, this isn't your first Games. You were with the Scottish team in Delhi. What was that like? Delhi was a really great experience. It was kind of the biggest thing I'd been to, um, apart from the UK school games, and even then the scale didn't really compare. Um, and I've also been a part of the UK, uh, or the GB Ambition programme. Mm -hmm. So we got a kind of little taster of the Olympics as well, which was really, really special. Well, that's perfect. Thank you very much for joining us today, and good luck in the Commonwealth Games. Thank you. Now that's all we have time for. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>